Hello everybody, just 902 here, and today I'm bringing you a very special treat. For I'm going to teach you all how to play the world's oldest, most exciting board game, Go. And it's spelled G-O. First, let's have a little bit of background about the game. Go was invented 2,500 to 4,000 years ago in rural China where they originally called it Weichi. Now, the entire object of the game is to surround. And by surround, I mean you want to take turns placing stones on the board, left and right. So for instance, black plays there, white plays here. For every move that's placed on the board, we create what is called territory. For instance, this right here would be not would be fourteen pieces of territory right here. The game was originally invented in some accounts to teach oh, made a mistake there. <laughs> to teach a rural king in, in China's son the manners of discipline that he needs for war because the son did not care. This king took his highest scribes and his most brilliant men to come up with a game that would interest his son into learning not only discipline, but also what he needed for warfare. So let's begin. What do you need? What are the rules for Go? First off, once a stone is placed on the board, it cannot be removed. No matter what happens, I can't. Take my stone, place it right here, and then move it around with my fingers. That is not doable. Step two. Once a stone is placed on the board, black always starts first. So since black starts first, after black, we have white. And black and white will play... Until the very end of the game. Let's just say this was something that was going on. We'll take turns like that to and fro, back and forth. Now on a go board we have 19 squares across and 19 intersections down for a total of 361 spaces. Which is a lot of moves that can be made on an average board. The next thing we have to know is that when played, since the board is so empty, black gets a huge advantage from starting. Say for instance, if I play here, we get all this area here with squares are areas that black exudes influence, or what we call potential. Not only that. He exudes it all the way down here, all the way to the other end, covering the whole board. Now once white plays, that is no longer dissipated, and these two radiate influence all the way down, pretty much cutting the board in half now. So that way both players have potential territory everywhere. I meant work everywhere on the board from edge to edge so go is mostly about a game of balance of power now the only other rules that must be known is the rule of co and the rule of life so essentially what we have here 
a second, let me find it. Can't find it. Where is it? Okay, right here. How do we know whether we have territory? What is the rule of life? Essentially what the rule of life is. Actually, wait, this is a better demonstration. The rule of life is very simple. Each stone, each little stone, radiates as what we call liberties, which means one, two, three, four. Four starting intersections around a stone are what we call liberties. Now, what are liberties used for? As I mentioned previously, a board cannot be moved from once it's placed down. However, a stone can be removed. And simply, in order to remove a stone, all you do is fill in all of the stone's liberties. So for instance, what we had here, wait, one, two, three, and four. That stone just disappeared. Now what happened to that stone? That stone became what we call a prisoner. Prisoners, along with the intersections that they inhabited that just got taken, for instance here, are points. So both the territory that you make on the board through regular expansion and the stones you capture equal points. Now, the only other rule which is one that's a little bit difficult to describe, is the rule of co. Essentially what the rule of co states is that, come on, say we have this situation on the board in the corner, and it was white's move, point one and two, white, and take the black stone here. But nothing stops black from taking white here. And so on and so forth forever and ever and ever. Now, infinite loops like this are not good. You can pretty much do this forever and ever and nothing happens. So essentially what we create in Go is a rule of code. So once black takes here, white must now find another threat somewhere on the board. So let's say we had a situation like this on the other edge of the board. And white, black is about to die here, so white please here. Now we're threatened to kill black. Now that white respond, if black responds here, white takes. And now black must find a threat. And so on and so forth. Until one person fills like this. However, you might be asking yourself, okay, well you're talking about life and death now, but what does that really mean? Taking stone and all that stuff, how do I know whether something is alive, or if my stone is on the board, when placing another stone on the earring sections where I just placed, kill off my stone? For instance here. If I placed a black stone here, wouldn't this black stone technically disappear since all four of its liberties are taken? Well, in this case, no. You're taking this extra liberty, essentially what I've just done, is I have increased Black's total liberties from four to a total of now six. Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Essentially doubling the amount of moves that white would have to do in order to kill a black.
So therefore, also known as what we call a link. So therefore, as long as my stones are connected, I should be unable to have my stones killed. So for example, we have this move at A. Now since all adjacent liberties have to be taken in order to kill off this group here, one, two, three, four, five stones, if white happens to play here, no matter what black does, white, um, black is dead. However, if black plays here, no matter what white does, he cannot place a move inside here. This concept is what we call eyes. Essentially, these two points cannot be taken. Any point that cannot be taken is what we consider an eye. So therefore, this group, these black stones right here, are what we consider alive. So they cannot be killed. Now the final rule for any game is very simple. Since black starts such a large board as I mentioned, white gets what we call Comey. So for instance, let me clear these guys out here. Okay, since black plays first, black still has this huge advantage like we showed earlier, which is only dissipated when white plays here. However, black continues to play anywhere he wants on the board. That continually means that black is one move ahead of white. In order to prevent black from getting huge advantage right off the bat, we have what is called Comey, or compensation points, which means white here gets an extra anywhere from half a point all the way up to 10 points, usually about six and a half points, in what we call compensation. So for black, getting these first few moves, white now has, con has points of his own at the start of the game, just to even things out a little bit. Normally we play with six and a half points, half, half just being set there in order to make sure there are no ties in the game. Like I said, so on and so forth, they continue to play. Now those are the only rules that are really in Go. Pretty much the beginner rules to learn how to play the game. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And in the next one, I will actually talk about how a game is finished. How a game is scored. And how a game is actually started, along with some basic principles like what a Fuseki and a Joseki are. Thank you very, very much for joining me, and I will see you all in the next one.